So before moving to the actual tutorial, let's download the required software. So over here, we are going to download Java Standard Edition version 7, even though anything above 5 will be ok. Apache Maven 3 as a build tool, NetBeans as a IDE, and for database, we are going to use MySQL. So first of all, let's install Java. So over here, go to the Oracle website and let's accept the license agreement and select the version suitable for your machine. I'm on a Windows 7 machine, so I'll select Windows over here. And over here, I already downloaded it. So installing of Java is very simple. We have to just keep on clicking next. So over here, right click on this. Let's run as administrator and let's select this. Let's click next over here. Let's click next. And before this, it's going to install in C program files Java and this version number over here. So click next. Let's click next for installing the JRE. So let's click continue over here. It has been installed successfully. Next we are asked whether you want to install JavaFX. We are not interested in installing JavaFX right now. So let's click cancel over here. Yes. So JDK 7 that is Java SE 7 has been installed successfully and it's been installed in program files Java JDK 1.7 folder. So let's go to the desktop over here. Let's right click on my computer, select properties. Let's select advanced system settings. Let's select environment variable. Over here, you have to specify or modify this variable named path. If the variable doesn't exist, then create a new variable, name it as path over here. Or else if it does exist, then let's just modify it. So over here, click on edit button and go to the very end, put a semicolon and we'll copy the path from here. So go over here, copy address and over here, let's paste the address, control V. And the address is the bin path over here because all the Java executables are within the bin directory over here. So let's have this, let's click OK and let's click OK over here, let's click OK over here. So the overall bin path has been specified in the environment variable named path. So let's try it out. So over here, let's type CMD, let's open the command prompt and let's run the Java and Java command. So over here, type Java C version and you get the version back. Let's just see if Java is installed properly or if we are able to run the Java executable and we get the version back. Next thing we are going to install is Apache Maven 3. So over here, go to the Maven site and download the binary zip file. Since I'm on a Windows machine, I'm downloading this over here. So over here, in the C drive, I have created an empty folder named Apache. And over here, let's right click on this and let's select Extract Files. The Extract Files option I got because I installed WinRAR. Instead of this, you can use any other extraction facility. So over here, let's mention the destination path as C slash Apache. Let's click OK. So Maven has been installed in this directory over here. So let's copy this path over here first and just like Java, let's click on this, select properties, select advanced system settings, select environment variable and let's create a new variable. The name will be m2 home and the value is going to be the path specified over here that is the home directory of Maven. So let's copy this and let's specify this over here, paste, let's click OK the variable has been created. Now let's go to the path variable which is over here. Let's edit that path and let's put a semicolon over here and we have to specify the home or the bin directory over here. So let's put m2 slash home underscore home slash bin. So what we are specifying over here is the variable name m2 home slash the bin path. m2 home, if you remember, has been set to this path over here. So the home path or the bin directory of that is going to be added to the path variable. So let's click OK. 
and let's click OK for this. Let's click OK for this. So M2 home has been set to this path and the path entry has been set to the bin path over here. Now Maven requires the presence of another environment variable. So over here, click on advanced system settings again. Let's select environment variable and let's create a new variable. The name of the variable has to be java underscore home. And the value is going to be the home directory of the directory where Java is installed. So over here, let's go to C drive, let's click program files, let's go to Java, let's click over here, and this is the path over here, not the bin path, but the home directory. So click this, copy address, and over here, let's specify that address. And let's click OK. OK. So just to recap, Java Home points to the Java Home directory, which is this path over here. And M2 Home, that is Maven2 Home, points to the Maven Home directory. And the bin path of both this software have been put in the path variable over here. If you click on this and click edit, over here, there is M2 Home slash bin and JDK7 slash bin. So the bin path over here and the home paths are in M2 Home and Java Home. So let's check out if Maven has been installed properly. So over here, let's open the command prompt, cmd, and over here, let's specify mvn slash v. So Maven has been installed properly. The next thing we are going to install is NetBeans IDE. So over here, go to the NetBeans download page and select Java E. Download that. I previously downloaded version 7.2, but you can even install 7.3 over here. So let's click on this, right click on this and run as administrator. So let's click next over here and over here let's accept the agreement. Click next and let's accept the agreement for JUnit. Click next and over here the path for NetBeans is going to be program files NetBeans 7.2 and the JDK path it has found out properly over here. Let's click next. Over here, we are going to change the install path of Glassfish to directly under the C directory. We are not going to install Glassfish in the program files directory because accessing the program files requires administrative privileges and we will have some issues if we access Glassfish later on via the NetBeans ID. So let's remove this over here and let's install directly under the C directory. So let's click next over here now and let's install. So NetBeans is being installed along with the Glassfish server. So depending on the speed of your machine, this will take a few minutes. The Glassfish server is being installed now. So we have finished the installation of NetBeans as well as Glassfish. If you want to contribute, click this or let's uncheck this. Let's click finish. Let's now install MySQL database server. So over here, the download link is available at dev.mysql.com slash downloads. Over here, select MySQL installer because it's a bundle of not only the database server, but also some connectors as well as the workbench. Workbench is a GUI interface for handling the database as well as some documentation as well as sample databases. So download a version suitable for your machine. So over here, I already downloaded that and let's click this. So over here, select install MySQL products and over here, let's skip the updates. You shouldn't be skipping, but right now I'm not connected, so I'll skip the updates. Click next. And over here, let's select, let's just accept developer default because the main thing we want to have is MySQL server as well as the workbench, which is a GUI interface for handling the database. So over here, let's select next and let's click execute. Let's click next. Let's click execute and the server is being installed. So everything has been installed, so let's click next over here. Let's click next. Let the default port be 3306 and let's click next over here. So over here, you have to enter a password for the root account. So over here, let's enter MySQL and let's repeat MySQL over here. You won't get this current root password field over here. I have installed MySQL previously, that's why I'm getting this field over here. So my previous password was also MySQL. You won't be getting this field over here. So let's click next. And let's let's click next over here. And let's finish. So let's open MySQL. So over here, let's go to all programs. Let's go to MySQL and select the workbench. So this is the open workbench and there is already a connection to the root user. If this doesn't exist, then you can create a new connection from here and name this as localhost 
and you can store the password in the vault over here you can type mysql and click ok and you can test the connection later on but already this connection exists for me and you can double click on this to open the connection so let's double click over here and here's the open connection 